Horizon is filled with things to do and it's easy to get lost sometimes in the vastness of the Forbidden West. There were a few mistakes that I did when I first started out playing and I kinda wish that somebody would have told me to avoid them entirely. Once you progress enough in the game it becomes more apparent that you should have done things a little bit more different early on or should have focused on certain things. Which is why in this video we're gonna go over 8 of the biggest mistakes that you should definitely avoid right now. Coming up to number 1 there's absolutely no reason for you to hold back on collecting items and as a matter of fact you should be looting everything that's not tied to the ground as it will eventually be useful later on. But unlike Zero Dawn extra loot in the Forbidden West automatically gets sent to your stash if it exceeds your inventory limit, which it will do quite often even when fully upgraded. You don't have to worry about that, even Aloy will point out throughout your journeys when she is sending stuff to your stash in case your inventory has been exceeded. Seated. But you can also instantly refill some of these items without actually having to be close to your stash which implies going back to a settlement or a local camp. And especially so it's true for the healing herbs, you only need to hold the d-pad up and you can immediately refill them especially if you happen to have already consumed them in the middle of combat. Now obviously this will imply standing still momentarily but it is definitely useful since you don't have to go back to these camps or settlements to get that out of the stash. Moving on to number 2, another big mistake that you might be doing right now is to not upgrade your gear, even the low level greens that you might get at the beginning of the game. You might be thinking that holding off these resources will be beneficial in the hopes of getting better gear later down the line, but I don't think you should just focus on this yet, because the benefits of upgrading your starting gear right away far exceed the cost and the downsides, and by the time you're ready to do a switch to a different piece of armor or maybe a different weapon, you would already have enough items to fully upgrade that as well if you're also going by the first point in today's list. And of course, it's also way less expensive to upgrade a piece of item rather than buying a more improved one from a nearby vendor. That is why I recommend it to also get those free greens in yesterday's video that you can also further improve and that's going to last you all the way up to level 20. But moving on to number 3, do not be afraid of the main story missions and especially so I recommend completing at least about 10 of these before you move on to like the side content. That was one of the biggest mistakes that I've done early on, to focus too much on the side content in the hopes that I would get a lot more rewards, kinda like how it is in other games. Well it turns out that there are special items that you absolutely need to complete most of the side activities in the game and you only get them by progressing enough in the main story. One early example is the igniter that you only get from the main story and this is what you use to ignite and detonate the fire gleams which are these like kind of red formation on rocks that once exploded will reveal areas ahead and they are absolutely mandatory for many of the relic ruins in the game. Another one even more important is the diving mask. Early on in the game I had to focus too much on managing my well oxygen level. Once you get this you no longer have to worry about that and you can stay underwater pretty much indefinitely, which also gives you access to a lot more new puzzles and new secret areas to discover, which also means a lot more better loot for you. Now moving on to number 4, another big mistake that you're doing is to not focus on breaking machine parts, and it's even more important now than it was in Zero Dawn. So you should always start any combat or any new encounter by scanning and marking parts on each of these machines. The two main things you should pay attention to closely is the chain reaction and the key upgrade items that you see with the focus. Now chain reactions are indicated by an elemental that the machine is weak against and if you do that elemental type damage against that part it will cause a really powerful response. Usually it comes in the form of a really huge AoE explosion that also debuffs nearby enemies and also deals massive damage to the primary target. Now the key components are valuable upgrades and these are basically materials that you will use even more as you progress in the game and get more powerful loot, but these get completely destroyed if you kill the machine before detaching them off their bodies. So if you go into a new combat, definitely make sure if any machine has one of these key components and make sure you break them off before killing the machine, otherwise it's going to be completely gone. Also breaking parts in general in the Forbidden West now does a lot more damage to enemies HP than in the first game, so even if you don't care about these two mechanics, you will at least care about dealing a lot more damage against the enemy. 
Now moving on to number 5, another big mistake that I was guilty of was to not focus on the survivor skill tree and specifically some of the medicine upgrades right there. Especially the medicine capacity and a few more that increase your heal over time when you use these healing plants. The reason for that is because you're gonna burn through these a lot more as you progress more into the game and challenges become much tougher. And you definitely don't want to just spam and consume resources but rather make the most out of them. Which is why I recommend taking some of these passives right here but most important will be the plant forager which is quite far into the survivor skill tree but so worth it if you start with this very early on and if you collect a ton of plants by the time you reach like level 25 or 30 you will have hundreds possibly even thousands of these berries ready for you to consume and heal yourself in battle now moving on to number six i have a quick tip if you want more extra resources once you progress in the main story you get to open up the base Think Think of it as kind of like Mass Effect type of player hub where you get to spend more time with your favorite side characters, help them out and cover more about the lore and even like give you side missions. But you'll definitely want to come here every now and then, especially once you finish some of the main story missions because this refreshes quite often and it's a special stash that will completely replenish many of the consumables and even give you new crafting parts that will definitely help you out a ton. Now moving on to number 7 do not skip on the hunting grounds. These will make a return from zero dawn and they're even more amazing at giving you resources and upgrade components. There are four of these in total on the map and you can prove yourself how amazing you are by taking down enemies in really interesting ways but I would also argue that this is a nice way to test out different combat tactics that you will even transition into your normal playthrough. Each hunting ground has three distinct trials and you will want to aim for full stripes which means completing these objectives under the shortest timer available because this will give you a huge bonus once you finish all three trials for each hunting ground and with each full stripe so while the quarter and half ones will only give you like lower tier mats the full stripes will give you these and a lot more on top including epic components but you will also get a lot of hunting medals and this kind of brings us to the next point on the list it's going to also be important to get these medals as you can unlock some really awesome early epic items right away. And this brings us to number 8 and the final point on the list, unlock the maw of the arena as early as possible. As I've said, you need to complete about 10 or 11 of the main story missions and the main story will bring you to this area anyway at some point to the arena, but once you have done that and completed that main mission, come back again and complete the side quest right in front of its entrance. Once you do that side quest, you open up not just the arena, but also also the prize master and he is the one that will sell you a bunch of items but most important going back at those hunting grounds medals you can use those medals to buy amazing epic weapons or even two quite early on in the game they cost about like 50 to 60 but even if you complete just two hunting grounds you will have plenty enough for at least two of these epic items now for the legendary items that you're seeing right here you actually need to complete arena challenges at the same location which will give you a different type of medal and you can exchange that medal at this NPC right next to the arena to get some really cool rewards. And they don't seem to be too difficult, I'm not going to lie, I have completed some of these levels even at around like level 17, I think you can do this a little bit earlier but it depends on what items you collected until that point. But some of the top challenges in these categories like the Slither Fang in the first one automatically gives you some of the best items only through that challenge so normally it becomes a lot less difficult than it is if you were to fight with your own equipment and there's many other like more easier encounters in there in the first two which is going to give you plenty of medals to just farm right away and immediately buy a piece of legendary gear like for example this set it's called the Nora Thunder Warrior and I think it's best in this set right here it gives you a ton of points into concentration plus and deep concentration which means a lot more slow down time duration which is amazing against many of the enemies in the game. This is it though, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.